Welcome to Sculpture Studios. Better wrap up warm for this one, as we're certainly wrapped up here in the studio for our Christmas project of 2019. Right, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be creating this castle that you can see here, or something along these lines. It's going to be about 1.5 metres tall, the rest in pro rata, so it's going to be about a metre square or metre diameter. Um, we're going to create this in a kind of hexagonal shape, as you can see the castle wall going around the outside. Um, going to be broken down into different elements that we're then going to piece together at the end, and it's all going to be made in polystyrene. It's only going to be relatively fragile but uh, it needs to be strong enough so this could be lifted and moved around without falling to pieces so this is the beginning stages we've been contacted by Katia Laws from the Kennett shopping centre in Newbury Berkshire as part of their Christmas display where oh hang on a bit let's just clean this up there we go as part of their Christmas display, where, in a fenced-off area, this is going to be somewhat of a centrepiece, we've been asked to create a frozen ice castle inspired by their concept image. We've pretty much been left to our own devices, or rather, I've been left to my own devices for this one. Working from the ground up, I'm going to start measuring, cutting and piecing various elements together, and following the reference as best I can. Using the usual trusty hot wire table, I'm creating as much as possible for each section before sticking anything together, and this way I can easily make changes if something doesn't sit quite right, but so far everything's looking pretty good. Once I'm happy that a section can be assembled fully and that all the elements are there, I use a polyurethane expanding foam. Notoriously messy if you don't know what you're doing, this takes around an hour to set before you can start trimming off any excess foam sticking out around the edges. I'm creating the base perimeter wall, which features the first two turret sections. I'm working out the balance between the neatest and the fastest most practical way of creating the detail. Here small pieces of wood were cut on a bandsaw just as a test but will probably go down a quicker route when it comes to the rest of the castle. I've also created small rampart blocks that will sit on top of the wall just to see how everything looks but for this I'll probably go for a more detailed approach by creating them smaller and many more of them. This is the progress after a couple of days. The exterior perimeter has been removed so I can gain easier access to this middle section. These little balconies have been placed on the front so the ramparts can be stuck on top. I've now cut these cylindrical sections, this more stacked up over there by the hot wire table. And these are to go on top to form the little turret tops. And uh, for speed we're gonna create all the little slats all underneath these balconies and underneath the turrets from polystyrene. The front piece was a bit more elaborate, just down there, made of wood, but uh, for speed, as we don't have too long to do this, we did create the rest in polystyrene, create a template and cut out about probably about 200 of them. And uh, this front piece is going to be a little bit more elaborate as well. It's going to be a pillar on the front. Uh, obviously, this is just a, a concept image that the clients asked us to kind of try and follow. They're not expecting us to get it exactly right as we've only got a couple of weeks to create this but uh, I'm going to try and keep as much detail in as possible uh, as the time allows so that we go above and beyond for the client. And the right Aiden? Yes it is sir, always. Always. Just going to let the foam set and tomorrow you can trim it off and carry on. Right so here we have the middle section, pretty much complete. Apart from a little, little bit of front decoration that needs to go on here. This is currently setting. Sit on the front there, the front entrance, little guard tower, and gate being there. And now, in for the middle piece, because we're building this in three sections, rather than having to build up from the floor, we're now going to create a platform the inside of here, probably with supporting leg just to take any weight. Um, and then we can literally build from here upwards for the last remaining top section. And that saves having to have a meter and a half to go back on top, work all the way up from ground level. So, quickly going to cut a piece of this. Foam it in to go off overnight, and then tomorrow, start getting on with the middle piece. The 
This is where the laborious but strangely therapeutic process takes place. For all of the brickwork on the castle walls, no, these aren't just going to be drawn or painted on, but grooves are actually going to be inscribed into the wall itself. I'm using a hot soldering iron tool, like you would with electronics, and I have template rulers for the widths and heights of each block, curved pieces for the larger turrets, and flexible templates for the smaller ones. Going over the whole shape will take time, but will be worth it for the client in the end. fins that are going to go around all the underside of the turrets. This is in place of the, the wooden ones that I created earlier. This will be far quicker to make and apply. And I can edit them if I need to. Zoom them down to the different size turrets. This is just the, the master template. And now I can tiny slivers off using the hot wire table. Hey Sean. Yeah. I thought you were going to do that. Terrible. Terrible. No, I've got no castle-related fun for this one. No. Actually, what is a good one? Now, anyone that's worked here or knows Aiden knows he simply can't help himself. Do you want to create this project, Sean? That's not a question. Basically, that means, Sean, I would like you to create this project. But then he says, do you want me to create the base for you, Sean? Once again, that's not a question. He's saying, Sean, I can't help myself, I want to get involved, I want to make the base, I'm going to make the base. You may be able to take the man off of the sculpture, but you can't take the sculptor out of the man. Crack on, Aiden. with all the elements now completed. This top piece just comes off the top here and sits in like a tray. So this breaks down for transportation because we think we can probably get about 1.4 meters into a van, but where that's 1.5 meters tall, that just helps it break down so they don't have to pay for a larger vehicle. Uh, the two turrets on this front section, we're keeping separate, just for ease of painting for the moment, so that we can get into all these more intricate areas without these getting in the way. Once everything's been painted, they're going to be adhered onto the front. We've spoken with the client, sent them a couple of images, they're happy with it all around. And, uh, and on the phone, Aiden said, Oh, uh, how about we've got a slight twinkle as well, so it looks like it's got a slightly frosty feel. Oh, this is King Kevin's flag. Kevin has been terrorizing the castle. Look at this. There's an invasion under the way. It's got a battering ram and a trebuchet, look at that. Around the side there, there's King Kevin himself. It's like a gift shop, look at that. Let's just take a little look at the sculpture in its entirety. We need to um, trim off a couple of the bits that have just been stuck on. So we've got to take off the squirty foam. But the main thing is it's looking nice and busy. And considering the client sent this as a concept image, and initially she said, oh, it obviously doesn't need as much detail as the image. We thought, well, let's just build it. If we come across any problems with the detail, 
them all simplify it, but uh, but no problems arose, so we kind of went balls to the wall, and hopefully gave the client a bit more than they asked for, so they're more than happy with the images we've sent through, and we'll send a couple of more shots once everything's been painted today. As this is going to be inside, and this is going directly on top of polystyrene, we're using a water-based emulsion paint. Going over with a spray gun, as this will be quicker than painting by hand, and this also allows the paint to blow straight into the grooves in the brickwork. Once everything has been covered in this pale ice blue, I'll use a dry brush technique over the top to give a whiter, frostier look. Hitting as much of the surface as possible with a very watered down PVA glue before sprinkling glitter over the top. The glue will dry clear, particularly as there's more water than glue anyway, and the glitter will just give it that icy edge to the whole sculpture. And there we have it. A castle created from polystyrene, as it's going to be inside and not going to be touched, for a Christmas display at the Kennett Shopping Centre in Newbury, Berkshire. Once again, a big thank you goes to Katia for finding us and approaching us with the project, and we look forward to any more sculptural requirements in the future. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook, or follow at Aidan Hines on Twitter, and for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.